What's going on everybody? Welcome to a new video and in this one it's going to be kind of a different style of video. It's going to be my personal list of the top 10 competitive players from the Madden 18 season. Now before I get into that I did want to talk about something I've been getting asked a lot of questions about you know I haven't been active on YouTube if I'm still doing YouTube if I'm still going to do it for Madden 19. The answer to that is 100% yes. I'll be doing it just like you know I'll be posting just as much as I did for Madden 18 if not a little more for 19. Uh, the fact of the matter is, you know, my channel really revolves around the competitive scene, and so whenever uh, that season ends and, and they're in the offseason, essentially, my channel kind of goes into the offseason as well. So there's just not much stuff for me to go off of. Uh, but I did want to get content out for you guys heading into Madden 19, and so uh, whether that content is kind of looking back at the Madden 18 season or looking ahead at the Madden 19 season, uh, I did want to kind of get some videos out for you guys, and this is going to be one of them. So, like I said, personal list of the top 10 players of Madden 19. Very, very opinionated. These could honestly go any which way. I look forward to you guys tearing me apart in the comment section and, and telling me how wrong my list is. Um, but without further ado, let's go ahead and get it started. So at number 10, I'm going to have Blocky. And so this might be a controversial opinion, you know, right off the bat, honestly, with uh, Blocky coming in at number 10. Now, remember, this is for the entire Madden 18 season, not just the end. If this was for the end and how players were playing down the stretch, Blocky would probably be in my top five. Obviously, lost in the semifinals of Ultimate League is a huge feat, um, but you have to look at the entire body of work, in my opinion. So, he didn't qualify for the Classic or the Challenge. He did qualify for the Club Championships, won the Dolphins Club Series with relative ease, um, but then ended up losing to Skimbo in the second round of that Club Championship, you know, 32-man bracket. So, you know, I'm not saying that's a bad loss at all. Losing to Skimbo, who was one of the favorites going into that tournament, you know, you can't really count that against him very much. And then he had a great showing in Ultimate League. So when we did see Blocky, you know, he performed very, very well. It's just that we saw him at the end of the season and really not much at all at the beginning in terms of EA events. To keep that in mind, I'm only going off of EA events. So you have the Classic Challenge, Club Championship, Ultimate League, and then the Madden Bowl at the end. Um, so looking at him in EA events, went 11-5, and five, averaged winning by a little over a point a game. So he wasn't dominant. Um, but he was able to come out with a lot of close victories, which, you know, is a skill in and of itself. Ran that West Coast offense, uh, 3 3 5 Kansas City defense, I believe. So that's going to be a common combination you see uh, kind of throughout this list. And Blocky coming in at number 10, like I said, I think is already kind of controversial. I think you could easily make an argument for him being ranked higher. Uh, he, that's just kind of how he fell on my list in terms of kind of what I put my priority on. So number nine is going to be Joke. So Joke getting that huge sponsorship with Echo Fox this year was a very big deal. And, you know, he played pretty well at EA events this year. He played 20 games, went 11 and nine, qualified for three tournaments. So the classic club championships and ultimate league uh, for the classic. He came in second, losing to Skimbo, which was big club championships. He had that first round exit where he lost to Deliverance, who did make that Cinderella run into the Final Four and almost got into Ultimate League himself. So you can't really hold that against him too much since Deliverance ended up being a, a, you know, a very solid player for that tournament. And then Ultimate League, probably you know a little below expectations in terms of making it to the playoffs, but then the first round exit. So he ended up finishing you know, kind of in the bottom half of that 16-man league uh, by, by having that first round playoff exit. Um, but overall, you know, looked good for out or for a majority of the season. You know, ended up winning his games by about a point a game. So a lot like Blocky, a lot of close games. But Joke, a guy with a lot of experience, was able to grind out some good close victories. Ran that West Coast on offense, Kansas City on defense. So once again, that gun bunch three three five combination and looked pretty good doing it. Like I said, Madden Classic came in second. Ended up going two and one in his groups, and then came out in the playoffs, beat Stevie, beat Dubby, and then lost to Skimbo by four. So. Uh, in my opinion, I, I rate the Classic almost as high as all the other tournaments, maybe a little bit less because it was the first tournament of the year and it was regs, uh, which, you know, everybody has their opinion on how kind of adequate that is as a game mode, and especially at the beginning of the year, before all the patches and whatnot. Um, but it's still a major tournament. He came in second, so you can't take that away from him. But qualifying for three tournaments, I think if he would have had a little bit of a stronger Ultimate League appearance in my opinion I could have easily put him a lot higher on this list um, so going into Ultimate League I had a lot of expectations and he did start out 3-0 and and then just kind of tailored off towards the end and, and kind of was a little underwhelming towards the end there but a guy that you know we'll see back next year and I expect him to make some noise um, so coming in at number eight I'm gonna have True Boy so True Boy 
This was, you know, a tough decision. True Boy also qualified for three tournaments, the same as Joke. The Classic Club Championships and Ultimate League uh, came in the same placing as Joke in the Club Championships. Lost in the first round to JS the Best 24-17, so he got upset in the first round after winning the Cincinnati Bengals Club Series with relative ease. And when I say relative ease, it was very easy. 49-17 and 28-3 uh, were his two games in that tournament. But he qualified for the Classic, ended up going 3-0. and out. I believe he lost all three of his games in his groups and didn't make the playoff stage. But then in Ultimate League, you know, had a pretty average Ultimate League regular season and then really turned it on in the playoffs by, by beating Joke, uh, which, you know, you can call that an upset maybe, but then upsetting Problem, who was very dominant in the regular season, uh, before losing uh, to Drini in, in the semifinal. But, you know, that was a very strong showing down the stretch from him. The reason I have him above Joke, even though their, you know, results are very, very similar, really the only difference is Ultimate League and the Classic, I weighed his better performance towards the end of Ultimate League and, and kind of the weight of that tournament higher than Joke outperforming him in the Classic. So I think you could easily sway this either way. In my opinion, I put True Boy a notch ahead of Joke. And, you know, it, he had one of the better defenses this year, 14, a little over 14 points a game he gave up in all 19 of his EA Sports, uh, you know, tournament games. Uh, was one of the more creative players on offense this year, running a lot of that Arizona, Philly, and even ran run heavy in Ultimate League at one point. So uh, was one of the few guys who kind of strayed away from the West Coast gun bunch. And so I, I thought that kind of weighed a little bit into my factoring, maybe a little bit. Um, so very, very close call, like I said. But going into number seven, now this is going to be a guy that a lot of people might disagree with, not really a household name, but I got Stevie J. And so Stevie J very quietly had a very, very good Madden season, qualified just like True Boy and Joke for three tournaments, Classic, Club Championships, and Ultimate League. Now for the Classic, he ended up going 1-2 and two in his groups and then actually lost to Joke in the first round of the playoffs, 13-3 to three there. Uh, but what I wanted to say about Stevie J was he had the Tampa Bay Bucks Club Series, which he won. Now, that club series in particular, his first round matchup was against Rage Like a Boss, which, uh, you know, we know he's a good player. Uh, we saw him last year, I believe, in one of the club championships. He m either won or came very, very close to winning. I believe he won one of the club championships last year. I'm sorry if I can't remember correctly, but we know he's a good player. He beat Skins 25-8 to win that club. And then in the first round of the club championships, he had to play Hushugs, the winner of the Saints club series, uh, which we know or who we know is a very, very good player. And then after beating a Shugs, he ran into Musafa Jones, lost to him by four. Musafa ended up making a run to the semis and putting himself into Ultimate League. So he had a very, very tough road in a tournament that a lot of guys, you know, I don't want to discount anybody or discredit anybody, but a lot of the guys were kind of new to the scene that you were seeing coming out of these tournaments. And so him running into guys like that who you know, right off the bat early on in these tournaments who were household names, uh, I think, in my opinion, kind of gave him a, a rougher road to where he got. But overall, EA events went 10 and 10. Uh, like I said, club championships lost in that second round. Uh, Classic lost a joke in, in the first round of the playoffs, but then Ultimate League ended up making a run at the end of the season and really gave Kiv Fitz. He lost 47 to 30, uh, you know, in the quarterfinals of the Ultimate League, but that game is 100 times closer uh, than what the score lets it off to be. Stevie fumbling twice on kickoffs, I believe, uh, giving Kiv the ball, you know, twice, basically inside the 20. And, and you just can't really have stuff like that go against you in a game against a player of Kiv's caliber. It's, it's just, you're, you're just pretty much never going to win that game. When, when a guy like Kiv gets those types of breaks, you're just not going to win that game. But overall, in terms of the Stevie versus Kiv matchup, he went 1-2 and two and ultimately against them, but all three of their games were knockdown, dragout fights. I'm looking at it. 38-30, to 30, he beat Kiv uh, in his third game, lost to Kiv 35-28, and then ended up losing to Kiv 47-30, to 30, which, like I said, that game was a lot closer. So he would probably played Kiv, who you'll obviously see later on this list, uh, the best out of anybody this year in Madden 18, and so I, I took that heavily into consideration. Um, but just kind of the overall consistency... He didn't have any like super bad showings and then him looking very strong down the stretch. That's why I ended up putting him above both True Boy and Joke who had very similar results to him. Uh, so number six, going into number six, we're going to have Eric Problem, right? Now, Problem's a tough one to grade just because it's Problem and psychologically, 
you just want to rank him higher because of who he is. Um, I thought he did have obviously a very good showing this year. 14 and four at EA events, came in second in the club championship and lost in the quarterfinals of the Ultimate League, which like I alluded to earlier was a big upset, him losing a true boy, especially how dominant Problem looked in the regular season of that uh, Ultimate League. But, you know, only being in two tournaments, you might say, okay, he's only qualified for two tournaments. He didn't qualify for the Classic or the Challenge. So why is he ahead of, you know, guys like Stevie, True Boy, and Joke who qualified for three? And I just kind of took his results uh, more into, into consideration in terms of he had two extremely good showings in both of those tournaments instead of, you know, three maybe so-so showings or three average showings. Um, he had two very, very good showings where he came in second in the club championships, losing to Ghost. Uh, but that was a grueling tournament. You know, that's a that's a case where you have to win your club, and then that was a 32-man bracket. So you had to win five games to win the bracket on top of the two games to win your club. And, and there was no groups or losing or anything. It was single elimination. You lose, you're out. So you had to win seven straight games to win that tournament, uh, which is why it was very impressive, you know, from Ghost winning that tournament. Um, but, you know, that's not an easy tournament to place highly in, in my opinion, with that low of margin of error. So I took that into consideration. And then Ultimate League, obviously, he was very, very dominant throughout the regular season, only dropped two games to Musafa and Chaos, uh, two pretty big upsets, uh, but went 8-2 and two and then got upset in the first round of the playoffs after a very dominant regular season, uh, losing to True Boy 27-20 in a very close game. So him just kind of being dominant for the most part and having two very high showings and placings in those two tournaments he did qualify for pushed him over the edge in terms of ahead of Stevie True Boy and Joke for me. Like I said, I mean, he was winning by over eight points a game in his, you know, games at EA events, um, ran that Green Bay offense for, for most of the year, I believe. A lot of deuce close, a lot of single back wing, a lot of uh, single back uh, ace twins. And then defensively ran a lot of the Kansas City 335. Also dipped into Indianapolis, I believe, and ran some dollar at some points throughout the Ultimate League. So showed diversity on the defensive side of the ball, uh, which was pretty cool. And so that's why he landed at number six for me. Now, cracking my top five, number five, I've got Dubby. And so this was actually a, a tough decision for me between six, five, and four, who you're going to see in a minute. Um, I, I put Dubby ahead of Problem mainly because of the consistency. So Dubby qualified for three tournaments, the Classic, the Challenge, and Ultimate League. I don't know if he even tried to qualify for club championships. I feel like a guy of Dubby's caliber definitely could have if he tried, so it would be surprising to me if he didn't and he did try. If he had qualified for that tournament, he would be the only guy to qualify for all four majors, which would have been very, very impressive in my opinion. Um, but just his results. Now, overall at EA events this year, he went 10 and 10, which isn't eye popping, but he didn't have any just like bad tournaments where he didn't look good or where he he just like, you know, went 0 and 3 and didn't make the playoffs. You know, in the classic, he lost in the semifinals to Joke. In the challenge, he lost to Joel in the playoffs. And ultimately, you know, he won his first playoff game against Musafa before having a pretty bad loss to Dreamy, 30 to 3, but you know, even though he got blown out, he made it to the quarterfinals of the Ultimate League, putting him in the top half of that 16-man field, uh, which was, you know, impressive. And so looking back, you know, at the Classic, he went 3-0 in his group, got that first round bye, and then lost by three to Joke in the semis. You know, Joke was playing very, very well, ended up losing to Skimbo in the finals, like I talked about earlier. In the challenge, he went a 1-2 and two in groups and then made it out, lost to Joel by three, who ended up losing in the semis, I believe, of that tournament as well. And so... You know, just kind of the consistency over the span of the entire season. He was around for the Classic, he was around for the Challenge, and he was around for Ultimate League. Solid showings in all three of those, never finished below the quarterfinals. And so just the overall consistency from Dubby, even though he didn't win a tournament or even get to any finals, just the consistency in his showings when he did get to these tournaments, I put him, in my opinion, a notch above problem. Like I said, a lot of people are going to disagree with this list, uh, but that's just me. Uh, so that was a very, very tough, you know, kind of ranking to come down on. And now number four, like I said, four, five, six were very tough for me. Uh, you know, mainly between Problem and Dubby probably was the toughest part. But number four, I got Ghost. So Ghost came flying onto the scene this year. And the reason it was tough to rank Ghost was very similar to Problem, where he didn't qualify for the Classic or the Challenge. So you're, you're waiting guys who qualify for two tournaments versus guys who qualify for three. And so that's where it kind of it gets tough. Uh, Ghost did go 12-5 and at EA events this year, like I talked about earlier, won that club championship, thought that was a very difficult tournament to win, 
you know, winning seven straight games in a single elimination environment is not easy at all. And then in ultimately kind of coming off that club championship win fresh off of that, uh, you kind of expected him to perform a little bit better, ended up uh, kind of a similar story to kind of someone like Joke where you had higher expectations and then he ended up having that first round exit losing to Stevie J 24-17, which turns out it's not a bad loss at all because I thought Stevie was looking amazing down the stretch in the Ultimate League. But, you know, in terms of dominance, I mean, completely dominated the Redskins Club Series, beating the Great Gatsby and Buck Sweep by a combined score of 59-9. to You know, went to the club championships, you know, kind of caught a break in the quarters because Killer Mike couldn't make it out to uh, because of work obligations, so he got a free pass into the semis. But that's not discrediting, you know, him beating T Timor, him beating Figgy, him beating Musafa, who was super hot at the time, him beating Problem in the, in the championship when a lot of people were picking problem to win that game obviously because of who he is um so not discrediting discrediting ghosts at all fourth best player for me in madden 18 i thought he was amazing absolutely amazing might have been in terms of how good he looked in that club championship i think the only other person who ever looked as good as he did in that tournament this year was was peak kiv when kiv was playing as well as he could possibly play so i think ghosts in terms of his ceiling is insanely high and so, obviously, I expect to see him back next year making some noise. So, that's really kind of 4 through 10 was the very, very tough part for me. Um, I think the top 3 was pretty easy and set in stone, honestly. Uh, number 3, I'm going to go ahead and have Skimbo. And so, Skimbo, I mean, just consistency. Qualify for 3 tournaments, won the Classic, so he won a belt. And then Club Championships and Ultimate League, both of those lost in the quarterfinals. Lost to two very, very good opponents, actually by the same exact score. Lost to both Problem and Blocky, 20-17. to 17. So, really just losing to world-class opponents and then winning the Classic. Having very, very good showings in every tournament he goes to. Went 16-7 and seven this year in EA events, winning by about 7 points per game. So, he just can't really... Uh, I couldn't justify not putting him in, any lower than number 3, really. So, not much to say about that Patriots Club Series. Didn't have the easiest road road had to play Rose Bowl first round which Rose Bowl's a guy where he probably could have qualified and went to half of the other club championships and had a really good shot at winning them um so that was not an easy game at all before coming back and beating T Davis 17 to 0 in the championship and then in the even in the club championships you know had to play ice had to play blocky beat blocky 24 to 10 that's when he broke out the pistol uh, fake hike that was the first time anybody had really seen that to get the 335 to jump off side so that was very innovative from him and then turned around and did lose the problem 20 to 17 but had a very good showing in that tournament uh, despite that and then ultimately you know looked very good started off slow 0 and 2 and then went on a nice run where he went 6 and 0 finished the regular season 6 and 4 and then uh, beat Joel 30 to 7 and lost to Blocky 2017 so Really just solid showings throughout the year and then the fact that he won the belt even though it was a classic and some people might not rate that tournament as highly as the others. It's still a tournament, an EA sanctioned event, and he still won a belt. So you can't discredit that at all in my opinion. And so that's why it's coming in at number three for me. Now, top two. Everybody probably could have guessed the top two before they even clicked on the video, honestly. Uh, but I'll go ahead and talk about them anyway. So number two for me, I got Drini. So... Drini, I mean, you can't really argue coming in first and second in two tournaments is just incredible. Um, you know, coming in first, winning the challenge, coming in second in Ultimate League, and he also qualified for the club championships by winning the Denver Broncos Club Series uh, before he actually ended up kind of getting upset in that first round of the club championships, losing to DJ, I believe it was, um, 24-13. to So, underperformed there but you can't take anything away from him winning a tournament and coming in second in another so two top two finishes and you know ea major events you just you know you can't put him anywhere outside the top two in my opinion so overall 15 and 7 this year uh like i said at ea events offensively ran miami and seattle for the large majority of the year a lot of bunch tight end uh this guy had the best gun trips tight end inside zone in madden 18 for some reason he was absolutely gashing everybody with that run uh, especially in Ultimate League, and so he had the secret for that run, and, and, you know, he put it to work, that's for sure. Defensively ran a lot of dollar and 3-4, Indianapolis playbook, I believe, and so just had very solid showings. You know, I believe he had the second most points per game average out of anybody in the entire uh, kind of Ultimate League, or any, any competitor, shall I say, by scoring almost 27 points per game, and so just a very, very solid showing. Uh, like I said, the only underperformance was really in that club championships. And 
Honestly, if he played better and maybe kind of had like a quarterfinal finish or better in that championship, uh, I think there could be a legit argument for him coming in as the number one player this year. Uh, but him getting upset and, and kind of going out in the first round made my choice a lot easier in terms of who number one and who number two is going to be. So obviously you guys can guess who number one is going to be. And it's going to be Young Kiv. So Kiv just played absolutely out of his mind in Ultimate League this year down the stretch. It was insane. Um, you know, qualified only for two tournaments. So, you know, you have a lot of guys who qualified for three. Uh, Kiv only qualified for two. But in both of those tournaments, uh, he did finish first and second. So he came in second in the challenge, first in Ultimate League. And yes, he did qualify for the Seahawks Club Series. He lost to Killer Mike in the final, so he wasn't able to qualify for the technical club championship. Although, if you think about it, he really, in terms of him versus Drini, he finished one game behind Drini, since Drini won his club and then lost his next game. So really, in the grand scheme of that tournament, Kiv finished one game behind Drini. So I don't hold that against him too much whenever I was comparing the two, uh, but really just winning Ultimate League, which was the, the crown jewel of Madden tournaments this year, I had to put him at number one. 16-4 and four at EA events this year. Really, like I said earlier, uh, the main guy who gave him absolute fits was Stevie. Uh, he did have, you know, he lost 40-19 to 19 in that Madden Challenge final against Drini, uh, where that game just kind of got away from him and got out of control. Uh, the score wasn't really, I don't want to say it wasn't as bad as the game was. It was just one of those situations where uh, some things weren't going his way, and, and against a guy like Drini, he just wasn't able to get the momentum back. Drini did a great job of sealing that game off. Um, and then he had a pretty bad loss in the regular season to Ghost 38-10 to of Ultimate League. But aside from that, he was dominant. I mean, he was winning by almost six points a game. Had, I think, the most points per game out of any competitor this year. 27.3 I have him at. Uh, ran that West Coast offense. Gun bunch a lot of. And then uh, the nickel through 3-5 odd for uh, the New England Patriots playbook on defense. So that was a common combination this year. And I don't really think you can argue that Kiv wasn't the best player in Madden 18. So... Uh, that's my list. Feel free to disagree. And even the guys on the side here that I don't have on the list, like Joel, you know Joel's going to be back. He was a great competitor this year. Uh, went to the Madden Challenge. Uh, qualified for Ultimate League, obviously. So you know you're going to see him again next year. Chaos had some good showings. Uh, qualified for the Madden Classic early on in the year. Had some good showings at some Challenger events, I believe. And then came into Ultimate League and was the only guy trying to run the Trips tight end style of offense. So that was unique. Uh, same thing with Tweez, had a, you know, was probably the closest person to Skimbo to winning the Madden Classic, in my opinion. Um, and then came into Ultimate League and, you know, had a unique offense with the strong close out of the West Coast playbook. Uh, just wasn't quite able to get enough done to get out of that, uh, the regular season into the playoffs. And then same thing with Prodigy, qualified for the Madden Challenge, I believe. I think he went undefeated in his group, went 3-0, and and then lost in the semifinals of that tournament, but he looked very good there. He looked very good. I believe it was at the Vegas tournament. It was at one of the challengers this year. I remember him looking very good. And then ultimately he had his moments. It was just a very stacked field of 16 players. And, you know, I expect fully to see him some more next year. So that's my list. Top 10 players of Madden 18. Feel free to flame me and disagree with me in the comments. I look forward to seeing everybody else's lists as well. Uh, but as always, thank you so much for watching guys. And until next time, take it easy.